Hello, this is Greg Allison, Green Greg's Garden and Worm Farm, coming to you from my home office in the wee hours of the 15th of January, 2020. It just so happens that uh, almost a day ago, in the early morning of Tuesday, the 14th, some interesting video got posted to YouTube by an Iranian that actually depicts two missiles, two missiles firing and hitting the Ukrainian airline that killed 176 people. This is a very interesting incident. Initially, Iran denied it vehemently. They said, uh, you know, there, there, there's absolute uh, certainty that this could not have been a missile attack from Iran. And then last Saturday, they had to backtrack that because the evidence against them was piling up beyond the point of credibility. So their uh, head of their aerospace division of the, of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard General Amir, I uh, hope I don't get this name too bad, Amir Ali Hajizda, Hajizda, I believe day is the way the D-E-H is pronounced in Arabic, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but he announced that indeed Iran did create the strike. Now, he did not admit to two rockets. He just admitted to Iran accidentally launching this strike. And then he blamed, of course, they blamed it on President Trump and his adventurism. And the odd thing is, of course, this was done right after, or immediately after they launched their rocket attack on the base in uh, Western Iraq. So that's kind of odd. They were the ones launching the attack. They had seen nothing coming in their borders. And suddenly they're shooting out of, at an airplane coming out of their capital city's international airport highly not once but twice and before the second missile was discovered people were already hitting the streets in Tehran and across Iran protest student protest it was student protest that brought in the Islamic revolution of Ayatollah Khomeini and now it may topple the rule of Ayatollah Khomeini Interesting. Uh, these protests are, are, may fan more. There's some hope in this. And the hope is we may have an opportunity for peace. You got to remember the, the Persians, the people of Iran, the Persians, the country formerly known as Persia before Hitler convinced them to uh, claim their Aryan heritage, which they are the true Aryans, not. I don't know the Germans have any Aryan ancestry other than Germ Germanic and European people are Indo-European. And I guess that's an Aryan root for everybody. So I don't know why there's some special status for Germans, you know, according to Mr. Adolf Hitler. But Mr. Adolf Hitler had some crazy fetish for blonde hair, blue eyed people, which he definitely wasn't. Well, he had the blue eyes, I guess, but, you know, he definitely wasn't blonde haired. So, um, you know. No excuses for that. That's just nuts. In any event, the uh, people of Persia are a proud, I had to rest, pardon me. The people of, of Persia were a very proud, independent people. Uh, they have been very uh, instrumental in throughout the history of the world. You have to remember it was Darius the Great that freed the uh, uh, Hebrews from the rule of Babylon. And uh, he is celebrated in the Old Testament for having done that. Now, all that said, now the descendants of those Hebrews would like to wallop the Persians today. So, and are we there doing their deeds for them? Why are we there? We have no further intrinsic interest in the region. America's not being directly threatened. They could work these things out or fight them out amongst themselves according to their own dictates. And I think even the descendants, most of the descendants of those people that happen to be living in the region of, of uh, the Hebrew descent really probably don't want this conflict. It's particularly the leaders. Uh, we can debate the merits of how they got there and all that till the cows come home and I'm not going to go there. That's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to talk about risk to you at home and a potential prospect for peace here. Um, and peace is a good thing too. It could be one less thing to prep against. And I have warned variously that uh, 
the uh, Revolutionary Guard had sleeper cells in the United States, they still do, that could be activated and had been set to do things that could take down our power grid and pose other uh, security threats to us Americans here at home and perhaps any other allies across the world that happen to be involved with us in actions against Iran. Having said that, it's not a necessity that we go there. Why are we there? What intrinsic interest do we have there? Oh, grab, we have to protect our oil out of the straight hanging roofs. Well, it just so happens that we're, we're becoming an oil exporting nation now. It's no longer a critical strategic matter for the United States any longer. In fact, if um, Iran blocked the Straits of Hermes, they would be principally cutting off their own ally, China. So <laughs> I think we would probably uh, want to correct that fairly quickly. Now the country that may be at most risk could be Saudi Arabia. But Saudi Arabia has had a deal, should we say a drug deal, with the United States for decades that we would give them security in exchange for them giving, you know, selling us oil in favorable terms. And that's helped uh, remain, uh, keep the... Uh, uh, kingdom uh, of Saudi Arabia propped up the house of Saud and it's gave us uh, a long-term supply of, of oil from Saudi Arabia. We no longer have such a requirement for that. Their wells are no longer as uh, plentiful as they had been, although they're still producing a great quantity, but uh, the overall strategic game may be that uh Saudi Arabia may have to pick new allies in the future. They may go to Egypt. They may go to Turkey. They may change the whole geopolitical balance of the Middle East. And I'm going to talk about that further in a future video about the whole Middle East morass, the whole situation there, <clears throat> and a lot about how it came to be, long-term tensions, how the area was redivided later by the British Empire after the fall of the Ottoman Empire, in a very unnatural set of countries in many cases, uh, like Iraq, for example. Uh, there's much to be said. I'm not going to say all that right here and now. I'm just hinting on it for a future video. Our hope here is this. The people of Iran, as I said, are proud people. I have said often they're very smart. They're very intelligent people. I have also said that they actually aspire to live uh, Western-style lives. They're are an Islamic people and will remain so as far as I know. But that does not mean that they would follow the Ayatollahs. They would like to have a life of freedom. They would like to have lives. If you went back to uh, Iran uh, back in the 50s, <laughs> you might, you know, almost think you were in the United States. That uh, was a very Western style country. Uh, and the people there tend to think like that. They're not, the, the Persians, are not Arabs. Nothing against Arabs. I'm just telling you, that's not who they are. They're different. They are a different people. They, um, and I'm not saying that's good about it. I'm just telling you, they're different. And they do have different desires because they've had a different history. That don't mean people in Arabia wouldn't want the same thing. They probably would. <laughs> they just haven't had their taste waited for that yet. <laughs> Maybe that time will come too. Because people, in general, tend to like liberty, uh, for the most part. Especially if liberty can come, as it often usually does, when people have economic liberty, they also have economic prosperity. Somehow today we are getting these things mixed up, thinking that we will have economic prosperity and not have to have the incentives of production, which is absolutely wrong-headed thinking. All that, and I will go into that more also in a future video. So I'm trying to be a little bit low key tonight. So excuse me if I'm not the firebrand Greg Allison tonight, because I'm really trying to bring you a message of hope, and a message of, uh, of action that we might take to get to that hope. So what, before I give you that little action, I like to say, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Please bang the update notification bell because there's gonna be many more videos on prepping, survival, uh, eating uh, from the weeds and trees, uh, gardening, worm farming. Yes, I've got some more worm farming videos I'm gonna come up with. I've made a new innovation to my sled bed worm bed. 
and that's got to come out soon and some new methodology for I'm working on new methodology for getting better more productive uh, squeezings in my peat moss and many other things so uh, that stuff will be coming out very soon and what and also I've been asked to do some videos like uh, videos about silent hunting specifically videos on my blow guns so I did a video over a month ago about my tote bag which I'm excuse me my bug out bag which I use for travel about Greg why don't you have this or any other end well of course it was a bug out bag for checking in your baggage for TSA uh, to, to look at you know some things I did not want to put in there for to have them swipe so that's the, what that was that was my TSA I don't care bug out bag to go in my check baggage so that's why it was limited the way it was. But people asked me about the blowguns specifically. So I will show a video about that and other videos about silent hunting. Some other channels have picked up recently the topic of silent hunting. I'll take it to the next level. All right, that's it. Um, please also check my links below uh, to support my channel for prepping supplies. Uh, we still don't know where this, we're not out of the woods with this thing with Iran yet because we're increasing our sanctions there. Uh, our troops are going there. Uh, the regime of the Ayatollah is under pressure. They may take drastic actions that may make matters worse. Do we have an opportunity to de-escalate de at the moment, but it could easily, just as easily, flip in the other direction. So, and there's many other things we're to be concerned about, like um, power grid loss due to uh, a weaker solar flare that could take down the power grid as Earth's magnetosphere drops, and which has happened rapidly now and many other things that could do us in. So it is still time to prepare. Trust me on that. Check out my links below to uh, uh, my Patriot Supply, long-term food storage, uh, tons of pepper supplies. Check out the links to True Leaf Market. You do need heirloom seeds to grow your garden in a sustainable year if you're repeatable method because you can't use hybrid seeds for that. <laughs> you don't want to use GMO seeds. and uh, they also have links for all your microgreen supplies. And then you do not want to have to go to the stores, which may not exist, to buy fertilizers and blah, 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 blah. And besides, you ought to be recycling your kitchen uh, waste. You ought to be recycling. Instead of flushing all the nutrients we garner from our soils and fills down the toilets and putting them in landfills, put them in the garden. Turn them back into good food. The best food you'd ever eat and one of the best, quickest ways to do that is using red worms. And I, my friends, sell worms. So buy your worms from me, greengregs.com, www.greengregs.com or greengregswormfarm.com. And I ship within the United States, with the exception of Hawaii, I do ship to Puerto Rico, I do ship to Alaska, Europe. So there, now we've kicked that out. What is this that we can do, Greg? What action can we possibly take? Well, of course, you can always talk to your congressman, your senators, write letters to presidents, uh, if you know people in the Department of State and other areas of influence within the big uh, deep state mechanism, you can talk to them whether they'll listen or not. I don't know. You know, I did my video recently about uh, uh, the way government is actually run. And it's somewhat less than congratulatory and uh, appreciative of much of that or or organization outfit. As you know, I'm not a big fan of governments, especially large governments, because they tend to overrun us to serve their own purposes. That said, there's another thing you can do. You can appeal to higher powers. Now, many of you may be atheist, and if you choose not to have faith, I respect that. And I'm not gonna pick any faith in particular. What I will tell you is that people of every faith can contribute by prayer. And if you don't have a particular faith, even meditation, it appears that the power of intention and the power of prayer uh, reaches across and has effectivity across many faiths, according to those that look into this. Many people assert and claim that. Now, the atheist among you would always argue that, and I'm sure I'm going to get tons of comments below. So if you don't believe in this, then fine. You don't have to take this action. Uh, and I'm not going to be picking on these kind of things often. But here's a, here's... And it's not just faith, it's protest. So the atheist among you, you got something to just silence, protest. Here's what I'm gonna call for. 
two minutes on February the 2nd. That's, yeah, 2-2-22. Two, two, no, 2-2, two, two, excuse me, 2-2-2020. Two, two, or 0-2-0-2-2020. Zero, two, zero, two, and when it is 2 o'clock in the evening your time, we may shoot for Greenwich Midtown. Uh, for though we will have to coordinate this one. Hey, let's spread this out. Let's make this viral. Get it out. If suddenly everybody just stops in a two-minute protest, just stop whatever you're doing. I don't care if you're atheist. I don't care if you're faith. If you got faith, then pray or meditate. Think good, peaceful thoughts. Put the power of intention out there. Uh, reach the higher powers with thoughts of positivity, thoughts of peace. And the thought being that America will come out of the Middle East and that Iran will go democratic, that the Ayatollahs will step down from power because of the popular uprisings within Iran, that the Iranian people will be in charge of their country once more with freedom to choose their destiny as they choose by a democratic process. If that's Islamic, so be it. But it should be something, hopefully, other than the Ayatollahs and be more representative. And I think it'll be more pro-Western. And if we don't botch it, we have opportunities for peace. That's an important thing. Opportunities for peace. I do believe we'll be proactive to do whatever we can to defend our country, our power grid. And if it's an opportunity for peace, that's the best. And I think we have it. And I think that we could call this a protest for peace. We may take it up again on to, on the 20th of February, since that's in the Piscean era. I'm not into astrology, but hey, you know, you know Pisceans for peace. <laughs> that's kind of alliterates two fish. You know, so it just kind of fits in the theme of things. So 2 to 2020. And I'd say 2 p.m. to 2 2020. And it could be a wave of protests just going across the country. If enough people just stop what they're doing, the government can take notice. Now, Greg, how are you going to affect all that? Well, I happen to have friends on much bigger YouTube channels. I hope to appeal to them and see if they'll pick this up. Many of you uh, also comment to those channels. Many of you go to those chat rooms. Go in the chat rooms and just start chatting it. Two minutes for peace, peace protest. Protest for peace, two minutes, uh, two, two, oh, two, oh, two, 2020. How about that? <laughs> and for the atheist, hey, just stop what you're doing. Everybody, stop what you're doing. If, if, you, if everybody just stops, you stop trading, you stop driving, you stop running the machine for two minutes, that might just take notice. Two minutes for peace. What do you got to lose? Yeah, the country will lose some productivity, but enough that it might get noticed. The powers that be might go, oh my gosh, the people are waking up. <laughs> yeah, that might just rattle their cages really well. And then they would know that maybe they have no hold any longer. And this should be the case around the world. All right. Allies and allied countries do the same thing. And if you're in uh, Arab countries, if you're in per you know, Persia, I don't know, so I set them separately. Do the same thing. Hey, we all want peace. Nobody is served by warfare. Uh, the people in Iraq don't want to be ground zero. People in Saudi Arabia, they don't. Yeah, they know they're at risk. Uh, they're a big target. And the, the <clears throat> descendants of the Hebrew uh, people that were once in captivity, who are now living in uh, Levant area yeah i'm trying to avoid keywords if you know what i'm talking about here um they're not served by this some of you think so and yet yahoo has been calling for things i did a video on that where he says well if they get this point well guess what if the ayatollahs find their power base crumbling to the point that they have no foundation on them and their whole regime collapses those centrifuges will stop it's been endless hope. Good chance. A whole new world could surface from this, at least in that area for now. Don't mean that tensions won't 
flare up, blah, 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 down the road. Or something else won't get us, but what this could buy you is more time to prepare. You still need to be aware because there's many things to be aware of. So and China is one of them. So be aware so that you can prepare. But it might buy you more time. So get on this. Two minutes for peace. 02-02-2020. What can it hurt? Two minutes? Hey. And those of you of faith, those pray. Those of you that uh, are new aging, meditate. Meditate and pray. Those of you that have no faith, just be a guy fox. Just stop. Protest my inaction by saying, hey, I'm not participating in the system today. <laughs> that could be a very re revolutionary thing. Hey, just saying. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate comments from this, and I'm probably going to lose a zillion subscribers. <laughs> But hey, there's a hope. There is a hope. So let's take it. Let's do something with it. And with that, I'll end on a positive notion, positive for a change, the notion of hope. You can take action. You can make a difference. And as a buddy of mine, Rex Bear from Elite Project, is fond of saying, and go on his channel and tell him, 0202-2020, let's stop for two minutes. <laughs> so. We can be agents of change. We can make it happen. Be the change you want to be. Be the change you want to see to steal from Rex. And I'm sure you won't mind it because I'm giving him credit. Go to his channel and subscribe to Rex's channel. Go to uh, the Oppenheimer uh, Ranch Project. Subscribe to that channel. Go to the channels of Christian Restbrook, Ice Age Farmer. Go to the channel of David Devine uh, and, and all these guys. You know, I think we can all participate on this. Get, get on these, get in our chat rooms of all the uh, channels and, and that are associated with other channels you know. Uh, go to Marfu or anybody and everybody. Post this stuff on your social media. Let's start it. Let's start a revolution. Let's start, let's crack it right here, right now, and let's put it out there. Let's drop this meme, let it circle out, and we can hit it. We can start it for 02, 02, 2020. We can do it again on the 22nd of February. And then we can, no, the 20th of February for this year. And then uh, two years later, we can do adjustment, a mid-course correction in uh, February the 2nd, 2022. Make it happen. Thank you for watching.